Hi, my schoolers. This is my school channel, and my name is Abiola. Remember, in this channel, you'll be joining me to tackle the Jam CBT past question for the subject chemistry the year 2012. Do not go anywhere, stay with us, because we'll be right back. back to my school youtube channel and in this video segment you'll be joining me to tackle the questions 31 to 45 so join me as we start with question 31 commercial bleaching can be carried out using what using chlorine and sulfur for oxide these are wonderful bleaching agents uh, we can use um, chlorine on cutting lining um, when you talk about sulfur you talk about silk sponges and straws and what have you i'm um, looking at ammonia ammonia can be used to as a um, solvent okay when it comes to laundry all right for removing grease oil stains and the likes uh, when you look at um, hydrogen sulfide okay uh, we use it in the analysis of oils and metals so basically if you go back to the question giving us commercial bleaching agents are chlorine and sulfur for oxide option c is the correct option question 32 Mineral acid are usually added to commercial hydrogen peroxide to do what? Okay, this is to minimize its decomposition. Uh, we should know that um, normally when you expose hydrogen peroxide to air, it decomposes to give you water and oxygen. And you can even accelerate this process either by eating, adding or addition of alkalis. So if you want to minimize or yes, minimize, let's use the word minimize according to the option given us. You can use mineral acid. You can even use um, propane one to try on. So all of this is just to minimize its decomposition. So the correct answer here is option C. Question 33. Which of the following compounds were born with a brick red? Okay, brick red color in a non-luminous bronze flame. Okay, brick red. Okay, so when you talk about red, you can point to lithium and um, calcium. Okay, but um, you know, certain presentation we have um, the, the red color attached to lithium as um, caramine red, some put it as pinkish red and what have you. But specifically, when you look at brick red, you are talking about calcium. So, um, this is definitely yellow. Okay, so the correct option here is option C for the brick red color. 34. The purest form of iron, which contains only about 0.1% carbon, is what is your rough iron, okay? Pig iron is gotten directly from the blast furnace. Cast iron is obtained from the pig iron used to make your cookers, your stove, that's for cast iron, okay? Then the rough iron is gotten from the cast iron, okay? When you eat this in the furnace with um, hematite, okay? You can use the rough iron to make chains, um, nails, or shoes, and what have you so the correct option here is option b for roth iron kindly use the link provided in the description below it's going to take you to the my school website there you can get the my school mobile hub for your android devices or the my school software for your laptops desktops computers and what have you so join me as we tackle question 35. a common characteristic between zinc and other transition elements is the ability to do what so when you talk about transition elements you can find all of these uh, features or characteristics attached to them okay but zinc is considered as or is well known as a non-transition element okay so that means it doesn't have a variable oxidation state it's just that any any uh, when you talk about non-transition elements they have a stable oxidation state so zinc do not share this characteristic with the transition elements let's look at let's look at um, option b the form complex ion of course zinc can form complex ions just like the transition element this is one characteristic that zinc shares with them okay zinc cannot act as catalyst because its d orbitals the partially filled d orbitals 3d orbitals is not available in zinc okay it is filled the same thing is required for this okay the 
partially filled D orbitals is absent in zinc. It is filled, so there's no partially uh, filling when it comes to zinc. So it can do this, it can do this, it can form collodions, zinc and scadium. Scandium, so it can form this, it can be used as a catalyst, but of course it can form complex ion, but it has a stable oxidation state, not a variable oxidation state. So one thing that zinc shares with other transition elements is the ability to form complex ions. So option B is the correct option. Do not forget to hit that like button. Also click on the subscribe button and always tap on bell notification so you can get notified as soon as we upload the next video segment just for you. Question 36. Which of the following metals is the least reactive? So, when you check the electrochemical series as well, it's also functional to determine the least reactive. That is, of course, gold. The symbol AU. This is silver. Okay, this is tin and this is lead. So, the least reactive uh, metal that we have here, okay, is gold. AU. Option D is the correct option. Question 37. Geometric isomerism can exist in which of these hydrocarbons? Okay, so at first, what is geometric isomerism? We are talking about a kind of phenomenon, all right, where um, there, is, there is same molecular formula, okay, but different spatial arrangements or different orientation in space, okay? Um, there is similarity in chemical properties, but difference in physical properties. And one of these, um, what we can also say about geometric isomerism is that it is common among alkenes, E and E, alkenes. So it can exist in this option A, X, 3, in. Question 38. Alkanons can be distinguished from alkanons by the reaction with what? By the reaction with um, Felling solution and Tollins reagent. These are mild oxidizing agents, okay? They just reveal the reducing property of alkanons. So the correct option is option D for felling solution. Number 39, the isomers of this, this is propanol, are what? Okay, when you talk about isomerism, you are talking about um, same molecular formula but different molecular structure. So, for alkanos to experience um, isomerism, they must have at least three carbon atoms, three or more carbon atoms. So, this is propanol. Its isomers are one propanol and two propanol. So, option A is the correct option. Kindly remember to use the link provided in the description below. Once you click on it, it's going to take you to the MySchool website. There you will be able to ask your questions right now and our solution providers are going to help you out. So join me as we solve question 40. Carbohydrates are large molecules with the molecular formula CxH2O, then you close your brackets, Y. In which of the following pairs is X not equal to Y? That is, each constituent of the pair, okay, makes sure that its X is not equal to its Y. So let's consider glucose galactose and fructose these are exoses okay and they have the general molecular formula this is h12o6 so in their molecular formula it shows that their x is not equal to y so in which of the options that you find glucose you find fructose or galactose it already invalidates that particular option so let's consider option b we are looking at maltose and starch Okay, maltose is a disaccharide and they have the general molecular formula of C12H22O11. So already their X is not equal to Y. So let's consider starch. They have the general formula of C6H10O5. Close your brackets N. So the N shows that the X is not equal to Y. So the pair that matches up with the requirement here is option B for maltose and starch. We believe that you may have better steps or explanation towards any of the questions we've solved so far. Please would like to know what you need to do. Use that comment section below, indicate the question number and the explanation or solutions you'd like to share. Question 41. A compound contains 40% carbon, 6.7% hydrogen, and 53.3% of oxygen, okay? So if the molecular mass of the compound is 180, its molecular formula is what, okay? Given that carbon is 12, hydrogen is one, oxygen is 16. 
Okay, so what do we have to do? We have to present their percentages under their symbols. And we know carbon is 12, oxygen, uh, hydrogen rather is 1, then oxygen 16. So when you divide this, you have roughly 3.3. This is still 6.7, roughly 3.3. So we divide through by the lowest value, which is 3.3. Okay, this is still 1, this is 1, right? And this should give us roughly 2. So, we can have an empirical formula of C, right? H, 2, then O. The molecular mass is giving us 1, 8, C. Okay, so we can see that we are looking for N, alright? So, we have C, N. C is what? 12. Carbon is 12. So we have 12 N added to, we have hydrogen, okay, which is 1. So 1 times 2, we have plus 2 N, 2 atoms that you can notice from here. Oxygen is just an atom as well. That is 16 times N, that's plus 16 N equals 1 A T. So 12 plus 2, that makes 14. 14 plus 16 makes 30, so we have 30N equals 180. Let's move it up so that we can have a larger space to express our solution. Okay, dividing both sides by 30. 3 in 18, that is 6. So, if we are going to impute 6 into this formula we have here, that will be C6, 2 times 6, H12, then O6. Remember from this. This time around, N is gotten as 6. So 6, 6, 2 times 6, 12, 6. So this tells me that this is definitely an exos, either a glucose, a fructose, or what have you. So let's go back to the screen to point out the molecular formula. C6, H12, O6. Option D is the correct option. Question 42, the saponification of Akano is to produce soap and Akano involves what? Okay, so this is hydrolysis of fat and oil with caustic alkalis. Okay, to yield propane 1 to triol and sodium and potassium salt of this uh, component fatty acid. So that's just all of the grammar. That process is referred to as saponification. And it's done by hydrolysis. Okay, the hydration I'm talking about removal of water, esterification, forming the formation of esters, all right? Um, oxidation from the word oxidation. So, of course, the correct option is option C hydrolysis of fat and oil with caustic alkali will yield soap and propane one to trial and alkano. So, option C is the correct option. 43. 2-methylpropan-2-ol is an example of a tertiary alkanol, okay? If it was 2 methylprop one hole, that is a primary alkanol, but 2-ol is a secondary alkanol. So when you talk about a primary alkanol, you are talking about the attachment of just one acyl group to that carbon atom carrying the hydroxyl uh, um, group. So we have 2 methylpropan ol is a very good example of tertiary Alkanol. So option C is the correct option. Question 44. Ethanol reacts with conch tetrahydrosulfate 6 acid at a temperature above 170 degrees Celsius to form a thing. Okay, so this is the dehydration process okay, or reaction. Okay, where ethanol reacts with conch H2SO4 to first um, produce ethyl hydrogen tetrahydrosulfate 6, which in turn will decompose to form. A thing. So the correct option here is option B for a thing. Question 45. An example of oxidation reduction enzyme. Take note of this oxidation reduction enzyme is this. Option D, dehydrogenase. Of course, from the name dehydro, that means removal of hydrogen. This is very important when it comes to cell respiration. You find this uh, versatile enzyme, okay, very functional in cell respiration. So the correct option is option D for dehydrogenase. Okay, that is that enzyme. That is an example of oxidation reduction enzyme. So option D is the correct option. 
Right there, we've come to the end of this video segment, but there are more video contents to come. All you need to do is to hit that like button, also click on the subscribe button, and always tap on bell notifications so you can get alerts immediately we upload the next video segment just for you.